look, my Titans came up a little short, had a great year, came up a little short, and I know they're not playing in the big game this weekend. I'm well aware. Uh, we've got Matthew Stafford versus Joe Burrow. Uh, we've got Cincinnati, L.A., going to be at SoFi Stadium. Huge game. By the way, let us know in the comments what you're preparing for your Super Bowl meal, uh, whether it's hot wings. Which, what, yeah. as you said, in yeah. the live you didn't hear. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you said hot wings prices are going up. Yeah, but so, so is everything else, right? I mean, and so there was this great the great debate this morning on the news about are people going to eat less hot wings? I'm like, no, it's the Super Bowl. Probably still going to eat just as many hot wings. But I, I do want to talk about my Titans for a second because that's right. They're not playing in the Super Bowl. But last night, our fearless leader, Coach Mike Brabel, was crowned the Coach of the Year at the NFL Honors uh, celebration last night. So uh, while we're not in the Super Bowl, we do have the Coach of the Year. The so best coach. Tighten up as it relates to that. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, by the way, i, I got to say this. I'm looking outside right now. And I'm reminded that when we were together last week, yep. we weren't actually together. We were at each other. Like, I was at my house. Cassidy was at her house. Yep. Because there was ice on the road. And so, fast forward seven days, and it's going to be 70 degrees today. So. And it's beautiful. It is. But Welcome. What's, what's it tomorrow? God, it's cold again. Yeah, I see. Well, it's cold. Come on. But it's still Tennessee winter. Weather. Remember the groundhog? He said six more weeks. Right. I mean, you know, can't argue with Poxitani Phil. So. Sure. Speaking of winter. Yes. The topic of which we're talking about today is the Winter Olympics and no, Winter right. Olympics. Yes. But first, we want to talk about this story and this person that we were so intrigued by. Thank you to Jennifer Cunningham for sending us an article about this person. And his name is Colby Stevenson. Who is Colby Stevenson? You know, Colby Stevenson is uh, somebody who really likes to to, to ski. Mm -hmm. And um, won the silver. In the free skier. He did. He did. And I don't know if you've seen all of that, but people are doing, by the way, if you've ever been snow skiing, right? It's kind of like if you've ever been Maybe ice skating. Like five, uh, several of us have been ice skating before. Uh, and I've only been about twice and it was equally as terrible <laughs> both times. And so to see people in on the Olympics doing things on skis, or on ice skates is truly amazing. But and, Colby. And, well, and the, some of them are going like 70 miles an hour. Oh like the, the speed that you would go. I was watching it the other night, but speed you would go on I-40. That's right. That's right. I was they, like, it didn't look hard, but Tanner was Tanner was like, oh, uh, no, they're going 72 miles an hour. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's truly incredible. Uh, we're huge fans uh, of the Olympics, but, but one story caught our eye because it was a story of a comeback. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you want to share kind of what happened to yeah. Colby? So, so he won um, a silver medal. That's it. Yep, yeah. so, silver medal. And so, uh, several years ago, Colby was in a car, and as I'm sure several of us have experienced before, actually fell asleep at the wheel. Some of us are lucky and we wake up very quickly, but he did not wake up in time and actually had a very severe car accident, which caused traumatic brain injury. And he had been skiing, he had been competing and his goal before this car crash and everything was like, I'm going to get to the Olympics. I'm going to get to the Olympics. Well, at that current moment, obviously he's like, well, my dream is over. What am I supposed to do? How is supposed to come back? He had to learn how to walk again. And they were like, I don't I honestly don't think you're ever really going to be able to ski again because it wasn't just the brain injury, um, but it was also the vertigo, which if you think about free skiing and flipping, because he does the inverted flips. Oh, yeah, spinning. I, 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 like, it just, you know, he could get hurt again. And so just through lots of therapy and his sheer determination, he was like, I'm going to take it day by day and I'm going to get better. Some of the things that he talked about um, when we were just listening and reading his story is he said, your toughest times can become building blocks and that's where you find your true character. And so he didn't choose to wallow in it. Right. He didn't choose to just let that defeat him. You know what? He crushed the no. Yeah, he did. When he, when all of his um, nurses and doctors said, he's like, I don't know if you're going to make a full recovery. You may not be able to ski again. He was like, oh, I am. He did. Yeah, he did. And, you know, it's one of those things where we often run into situations where uh, we get knocked down. Uh, maybe it's not a car accident. Maybe uh, it's a stroke. Maybe it's loss of employment. Maybe it's the the death of someone close to us. 
the, the list goes on and on, but I think one of the reasons that NBC spends so much time trying to uncover these stories is that they connect with us, the yep. audience, because yep. we've all been in moments where we got knocked down. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all deep in, inside of us have a desire to get back up mm -hmm. and, you know, the star center we're every day we're working with folks, uh, our mission to help any person with any disability realize their potential. And, you know, when we see stories like Kobe now, Kobe, I, I mean, it'd be hard to argue that he didn't make a full recovery, but i tell yeah. you that the thing that was interesting to listen to Kobe talk, um, how many of us through life take for granted what it is that we have. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we can relate to. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that he was talking about. He said, even though it was some of the toughest days of my life, I always had hope. And he said, I never felt so much gratitude before the crash. He actually said, I did not see how lucky I was. Right. And now every day I find the beauty in all of the little things. I think that's it's so amazing. And, and, you know, starting, starting every day with gratitude. Yeah. It changes the whole mindset and the whole approach mm -hmm. to every day. And he's doing that now. That. One of the practices that I do is I try to figure out three things I'm grateful for every single day, because even though I'm naturally a positive person, mm -hmm. sometimes you can get stuck. I think it's called fault stacking, you oh, yeah. know, where you just like this happened, this happened, this happened. But if you focus on three things you're grateful for, even if it's just like how good my coffee tasted this morning, be grateful for that because right. every day is such a gift and just joy to be able to live every single day now we've got something also joyful oh, we're doing right. a giveaway yeah yeah well, um, i mean everybody see. likes free stuff and so we're gonna someone's uh, actually gonna bring in what we're giving away okay perfect yeah uh -huh. see when you get to do this twice yes, you, you learn you, you go oh gosh it'd be great if we had a prop to show right now <laughs> come on in rachel uh so thank thank you rachel you're, for you're uh, welcome. helping us so this right here, uh, I'm going to try to get the yeah. glare right. Yeah, there we go. So this is um, a cutting board and or a charcuterie board, whatever one wanted to use it for. Uh, but one of our clients actually made this cutting board. Uh, by the way, it'd be great for like the Super Bowl party. That oh you're gonna my have. gosh, I so, didn't think about that. Well, no, but on the back side, yep. there's an engraving uh, that simply says, thank you for being such an important part of our story. Uh, Fun fact about this client. He goes by the blind craftsman. Yeah. He's was one of our clients and y'all, this is some of the most gorgeous work. And in we're talking about incredible stories, just how he's been able to do what he loves to do, even being visually impaired. So it, it's, it's such beautiful work and we're going to give it away to you yeah. guys. Yeah. So what do we got to do? Let's see. Well, so the question, so <laughs> So the question is, uh, first of all, the history of the Olympics, there were there were many, not many, there were a few early on in the Olympics, a long time ago, who had a disability but competed against those without disabilities. And there became a time, I'm not going to tell you when because that's part of the question. <laughs> we're going to slip up. <laughs> where the Paralympics was born. Uh, just so you know, on March the 4th through March the 13th, that is when the Winter Paralympics takes place mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. So here's, in just a minute. here's the question. Yeah. When was the first official Paralympics? And what country did it start in? So we're going to not just choose the first person that answers, because sometimes with live videos, the comments get real flippy floppy or muted. So, or muted. You know, it I'm happens. Muted. It happens. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we, our comment might be muted. Our comment might be muted. <laughs> We just want to make so sure. So this is what you got to answer. Answer, when was the very first winter Paralympics and what country? We are going to choose a winner yeah. from the correct comments. If you don't get it right the first time, comment again. Right. You're going to have an entry. When are we, when are we, when do gonna, we want to pull this winner? We're going to draw it this afternoon. Woohoo! Yeah. And so we'll reach out to whoever wins yep. and let you know uh, in the event that you might want to have it for the Super Bowl party. If you live close enough. That could be fun. Come on by. If not, we're this this thing is great. That's it. So speaking of the Winter Paralympics, like you said, um, they take place Friday, March 4th through Sunday, March 13th. And you can watch them on any of the NBC Universal things 
actually for the first time going to get some serious primetime coverage of the Paralympics yeah. on NBC. I think there's going to be eight hours of coverage on NBC during primetime, but also it's the most coverage they've ever had on any Paralympic season on NBC. So that's Peacock TV, that's NBC, NBC app, I believe. Um, they're, se- they're giving out several different awards, uh, 78 medaled events, um, 736 Paralympian, Paralympians, that's hard to say, Paralympians, will be competing and they have tons of different sports, but we'll talk about the sports, but you have a Paralympian that you yeah. were really interested in. Well, I did a little research and, you know, again, everything's about a great story. Mm-hmm. Well, based on this, this last two to three years that we've all walked through, whether you're in the United States or somewhere else, uh, COVID-19 has been real. Uh, and for one of these Paralympians, um, she's not just like a professional athlete. She's actually a nurse uh, who signed up to serve on the COVID floor at her local hospital. And she is a silver medalist from 2018. And so she's going to be competing again. But I just think it's it's just fascinating. You know, this person who has has achieved a silver medal which is way higher than uh, anything I've ever even thought about getting, right? I think and, I may have gotten a spelling bee trophy. That may be the most thing. I've yeah, ever but, but I mean, but but this this person who, in essence, has has risen to the heights of of her sport, raising her hand in the midst of a pandemic and saying, "I want to go work on the COVID floor." Um, what a great testimony! But that is what really you find inside the Olympics. And so yeah. Brittany Corey, be looking for her. She's a snowboarder. Snowboarder. Okay, I'm going to be ask. cheering. Uh, I can't, I can't wait. So I, I think it's, I love that because she's obviously, as we know, a lot of these Olympians have something in them that we, just, not everybody does. Yeah. So she's dedicated her life to training for Olymp- Olympics, but she also has, has a life dedicated to service. And That's I think exactly that is right. huge. And we are so grateful for all of our healthcare here. Okay, so snowboarding is one of the sports that will be contested. Yeah. We also have alpine skiing, mm-hmm. the biathlon, which is divided into sitting, standing, and visually impaired categories. And then cross-country skiing, which is just exhausting, but yes. amazing at the same time. Sled hockey. If you're not, even if you're not much of a hockey fan, you should definitely watch the sled hockey because it is so cool. Yeah. It is so cool. Snowboarding, as you just mentioned, and wheelchair curling. Yes. So I didn't even know there was a thing. Lots of curling <laughs> fans out there, I know. Uh, and so the, the Paralympics not going to be left out from the opportunity to participate in mm-hmm. curling. Um, I find myself mesmerized. Like, I can't turn it off. No, you're just like, it's, gonna- it's so much like shuffleboard um and it's there's science to it there is it's, you know when they start amazing. like whatever sweeping it's called, sweeping it fast and then they're like slow and then they're like fast yeah. i can't i can't even imagine they scream a lot i mean it's, they do scream uh, a lot yeah. it's not like tennis it's no no it's very not, very different no, no. um another cool thing I, I really appreciate how the olympics have recognized and decided to be more inclusive like yes they started the Paralympics but also not just in the coverage but also they are going to have I believe an entire set of Paralympic presenters nice which I think is fantastic because that's representation and inclusion um there's also some 10 so if you want to know more about the Paralympics and specifically USA you can actually go to teamusa.org and it'll give you a whole rundown of the Paralympics and some of the top 10 um team USA there's I was reading this article 10 team USA athletes to watch at the winter Paralympics Mm -hmm. Ravi Drugan with alpine skiing um Andrew Kirka alpine skiing got a lot of alpine Lots of skiing. Mm-hmm. We've got Lyra. I can't say some of these names. Nordic mm-hmm. skiing. More Nordic skiing. So we've got a lot of people skiing. Sled hockey. Uh, his name is Brody. Zach with snowboarding. The girl you just said with mm-hmm. snowboarding. Mm-hmm. Keith Gable. Lots of them. Um, and then wheelchair curling. One specifically is great in wheelchair curling. So I'm excited to see those. There's no doubt. And, and so we're going to be continuing to talk about yeah. it because that's part of what we believe we're called to do mm-hmm. is to shine a spotlight on those those that are are doing what we're asking people here each and every day to do because these folks don't whether it's the olympics paralympics whatever it takes an unbelievable amount of effort from that individual commitment discipline and we tell folks all the time we don't have a magic wand somebody walks in with disability we don't wave a wand over them and then all of a sudden right they're back to normal or 
it takes a lot of work from mm-hmm. them to get to where they yeah, ultimately it, exa- it's not just the services that we're able to provide but specifically what they internalize Absolutely. and figure out what they want to do because a lot of them are starting their lives over and having to find that love and that passion again that's right that's so right. a lot of them crush the no i see y'all may see my shirt yeah. crush the no um that's something that we love saying here and what a lot of olympians do and a lot of paralympians do is they crush the no and they just exceed their expectations so this was fun i'm glad we got a take two i like the take two <laughs> hopefully we weren't on mute if we were I don't know that I, I, I don't know. It's fine. I, we might do a take I, I think three. I did, I did a test, but reminder about the giveaway, comment what year the Winter Paralympics started and what country, and we will choose a winner from the correct answers and you could win one of our warriors. That's right. It's over here. Uh, the cutting, cutting board. Um, by the way, happy Super Bowl weekend. And don't say that we didn't tell you Monday is valentine's day <gasps> do you have do you have are you taking your wife out do you have plans oh there's definitely plans definitely oh, plans yeah, yeah. So can't, it's can't wait good, it's a good time super bowl and valentine's day that's right it's a lot of a lot of big things coming we hope you all stay warm have a happy friday absolutely take care thanks guys